reality. We are all creating this reality together through our consciousness in the same way as um, some people, uh, well, yeah, maybe th this might explain it a little bit. Um, when we have really wild weather, you know, difficulty, chaotic weather, the weather actually um, is affected by our consciousness. So when the human consciousness is chaotic, when there's a lot going on, you know, this, this is often played out in the weather being uh, disturbed as well because every we are part of everything so we affect everything we affect all of nature through our consciousness mm. so and we are also connected with everything and everyone yes, so yes if we accept if we accept that that we do you know we do have an effect on everyone firstly we have an effect the way we think and feel has an effect on our cells. Yes. Right? It also has an effect on our personal surroundings, on our children, on our, you know, the whole environment. And then that just goes out into this community, the society and the country yeah. and the world. So And as as Bruce Lipton says, mm -hmm. every thought that we have or subconscious thought or belief, we actually our body will actually release if we have a, a happy thought, it will release happy hormones. Yes. If we have a negative thought, it will release negative, negative um, like um, adrenaline and cortisol. Yeah. Yes. And so every cell in our body responds to those and even our genes can be activated and deactivated by the hormones that are, are released in our body by our thoughts and beliefs. That's exactly right. Uh, we, we've never really been taught the importance of, you know, uh, of um, really being aware of what we're thinking and what we're feeling mm. and how it affects others. And how it even Absolutely. affects plants and how it even affects water molecules. The way yeah. we view water, we know that from the experiments of Dr. Emoto. Mm. The, uh, I Jack love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, how, you know, when he froze the water crystals where he had... Uh, spoken either, um, you know, angrily towards or he had given them love or played beautiful music, Beethoven, played uh, heavy rock music. There was a different frequency going into that water. And that was all from his consciousness and how he was viewing that water, how he was perceiving it. Mm. So our cells, as Bruce Lipton says, are eavesdropping. <laughs> on everything we think and feel. It's amazing. And, and I mean, when, when we look at the science behind it, it can start to make more sense. And I know it is hard to imagine that everything in our reality is affected by our thoughts and beliefs. Um, but I will just quickly go into my um, experience with having done our, the relationship balance that you helped me through. And I specifically remember saying to you, I've never met my birth father and I'm sure it's having an effect on me and I, you know, stopping me holding, having a relationship. It was an amazing process where I had a vision and about a week later I actually had an experience just like the vision. And then a few months later I met, I met Craig, my wonderful partner. Yeah. But what is so incredible, the coincidences the fact that I was adopted, his, his mum actually adopted out a girl. My mother was from Auckland and his mother's from Auckland, but we met in New South Wales. Yeah. And yeah. where the daughters were both around the same age and similar, I had a sister with a, the same name and um, my, my, my ex-partner, father of my children, um, he was eight years older so eight years older and we met at a, um, a hotel called the Hotel Pacific well I met Craig he's eight years younger we met at the ho at the Pacific Hotel in a different <laughs> in a different state <laughs> and wow the names the um, his his mum's oh look the it's just incredible there's a there's a the synchronicities um, there are so many similar names dates 
Um, oh, I can't even think of them all right now, but there is just so many. It is just bizarre. And his mum and I, we, we talk every day, telling each other how much we love each other. But she's my daughter that, that she didn't have. I mean, She's that's... absolutely my spiritual mother. There's wow. no doubt about it. And so not only did I find my man, I found my mother as well. <laughs> and, and everything that I would have wanted or that I was missing in my life, that I was longing for, um, not just the man, but everything else that came along with the man, yeah. it, it was like it was like I was a, a a lost jigsaw piece and I kept on trying to put all my or get, gather all these pieces and put them together yeah. but when I met Craig it was like the piece just went into the puzzle and it it was something that I could never have um orchestrated or tried to create and I, I had tried to create things in the past but it was purely from tuning into that frequency those feelings around my birth father and the feelings of, um, I know, um, we, I won't go right into, we won't go right into my experiences because I don't want to focus on that at the moment, but to change that frequency, that vibration that had actually been a part of me ever since conception. That's right. And, and can I just say something here? Um, the fact that, even, I mean, you always wanted to connect with your birth father, right? Yeah. But you never had, a, had an opportunity. No. But, but basically what we did is we simply connected you with him on the other levels, right? Yes. And that was enough to resolve everything. You didn't need to go physically, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I felt loved and I felt wanted and worthy. In that process, it was all yeah. resolved when you actually uh, connected in with him. Yeah, on that yes, level. yes, and and also that's and um, my vision was that my my community, my family was a tribal community, and I was welcomed instead of being shunned. Yes, and that the feeling of that welcoming of my my soul, my spirit, my being into this physical world, it completely changed my reality. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks. So it's amazing. So I, I, what I really want to share with people is that while this devastation has happened to the world and is continuing, um, although it does seem to be some very big shifts coming out, I'm really enjoying the things that are happening that are, they're being exposed because yeah. for years I have, and I know, Carol, I know you were sharing some things with me and I thought, that's a little bit too much. I, I don't know if I can believe that. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we're all hit with it and it's like, whoa, welcome to the new reality. <laughs> mm. And um, But I knew a lot of things were going on in the medical world because I've experienced yes. it myself. I nearly died in 10 years of researching or every alternative medical, complementary, everything I could, speaking to literally thousands of people over the years from all over the world on different um, support networks and um, online groups and what have you. And I knew the seriousness of the um, absolute, um, uh, well, uh, corruption and mismanagement of our health systems. Yeah. Um, I, I knew that that was going on. Um, there's a lot of things, some pretty nasty, evil sort of things that I didn't realise were as bad as they are, that what well, they obviously seem to be from what yeah. our reality has become. And so many people's lives devastated with no, no sort of um, concern by people who should be really concerned. Yeah. And so, um, so what I really do want to share with people is that out of all that that's happened, we can find, um, we can look for the positives. I mean, I, I don't want that to sound like a cliche sort of, oh, just look for the positives. But on a really deep foundational level, we can recreate um, a really good, solid, um, healthy and happy existence, like having really true good health care where people 
people's health problems are really addressed and resolved, not just, you know, given a drug that takes away a few symptoms for now but gives complications for later but doesn't actually resolve the issue. I mean, there's so many people with chronic conditions that they're living with, um, more than we've ever had ever um, with almost every illness. And a lot of these conditions have been easily um, alleviated using complementary methods, medical, natural, alternative methods, where you're actually removing the underlying causes. And so, and really that's a really big foundation for um, our whole existence. I mean, this, if, we, if everyone can be healthy, um, they're so much more productive, so much happier. You can support people who are needing support. And, you know, a whole society can, can function a lot better. And economically, environmentally, in so many ways, we've got so many opportunities to really create some strong foundations to have a really good um, existence, not only in our, in our own lives, in our individual selves, in our families and in our whole societies, communities and, and um, as a humanity itself. Yeah, that's right, Di. And the one thing I just want to say here is that, um, <clears throat> as you were saying, holistic, holistic medicine, which what, what that means is that because we are a whole being, we are spiritual, mental, emotional and physical being. So we need to attend to you know, all aspects of ourself, not just one aspect of ourself. And I've had, I've had um, a number of clients who've been doing very well in regards to taking all the good, you know, nutritional uh, supplements and, you know, gone the, the natural path with, with all, the, all of that, but they still haven't worked on those emotional issues that, uh, you know, and uh, they found, you know, I found that um, your body, uh, when these emotional blockages are gone, your body can much better take in these nutrients as well and utilize them. Whereas, you know, if, for example, if you've got turmoil going on in your emotional uh, center, you know, you'll quite often have problems in your digestion. Yeah, and you won't be able to digest foods properly and you won't be able to, you basically are not digesting life. That's what it's all about. So it is really important to to get in touch with those emotions, and you know, and anyone can really do this just by sitting and just tuning in and just feeling into your body, into into those different parts of yourself, and your body will will um, will tell you. It will give you some images. You could say it will sort of translate a, a particular feeling, and it, that will come as an image. And, um, you know, when you, can, uh, when you can see that, you can really get an understanding of what's going on at those deeper levels. Absolutely. And sometimes even just awareness, even just being aware of where, I'm ho where you're holding those feelings in the body is enough yes. to shift it. That's right. Because the body, um, it likes attention. It's like anybody. Yes. If you starve a child of attention, they get sick and they get unruly. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. definitely. I must say that during my whole process with the Lyme disease, that, um, oh, well, my whole life I've had some form of chronic illness or another, asthma and allergies up to 20, then chronic fatigue, mm. and then... Um, and then some neurological things, digestive things, then the Lyme disease, and then what was probably cancer, it was confirmed in thermal imaging. Mm -hmm. And so in one way or another, there's always been something. And But during the last 10 years, when, it, when I've been really intensively researching and trialling and different remedies and methods and things, um, I would have liked to have been able to just have a complete shift on the mental, emotional side and have a, have a complete healing. But what I've actually found is that um, there were so, much, so many years where nothing was changing and I wasn't able to find any remedies or treatments. So I'd do a lot of the emotional work. And often when I surrendered to the very deepest, darkest emotions that I hadn't been wanting to feel and, um, and often tuning into that illness 
or the pain in my body or whatever it was that was screaming at me, saying there's something wrong, when I was able to tune into that at the very depth of it and release those feelings and transform them, often I would have a, a physical shift or change in my body, but then also I seem to have this manifestation of a treatment or a remedy happen to come to me. Yeah. That's <laughs> and it happened, it happened so many times that I would actually begin to look forward to, okay, so this is going on in my body. What's, what's happening now? Let's just see what's in there. And then I know I'm going to get better or something's going to work out for me. So yeah. instead of dreading the awful feelings in my body or the illness, then it would be a signal, oh, okay, you know, come over here. This, this is where I go next to, to yeah. feel better or get better or either feel better emotionally, physically, yeah. spiritually. And, and so then it becomes a journey rather than a struggle. That's right. And the thing is, when we're feeling a pain in a particular part of the body, that's the body um, telling us, you know, that, that there's something that's not right on the consciousness levels there. Mm. I've had, you know, I've had people, um, I've had some very fast healings just by going in and connecting and showing the person or getting the person in touch with with where the conflict was that was going on in that particular area, just um, resolving that conflict, shifting that energy through. And um, like I ha had a lady who was having to walk with a cane and then she had a, um, had a, went right into her hip and there was a, a problem there in that hip area between that masculine and feminine. And um, once, we, once we cleared that, she was able to instantly walk without her cane i mean she wanted to come up and do one of my courses but she said i i don't think i can make it because i'm you know i'm, I'm really having a lot of pain here and i just said well look uh, let's let's see what we can do over the phone and see how we go and um yeah so she um it happened so fast for her that she was able to come up and attend the whole course without any pain or anything that's fantastic oh and i know you've had hundreds <laughs> you've had so many the amount of people that I've spoken to um, and witnessed at, at the courses who have s seemingly miraculous healings simply by releasing an emotion or transforming yeah. an emotion, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I think for myself, um, because there's su there was such a strong part of me that just didn't want to be here on this earth, I think for me, like I've, I've battled with that within myself. Like, why can't I have those incredible healings where I just shift the, shift the feelings, the transformation, and then I'm just better? But I think for me, because I was so disconnected from my body yeah. and so disconnected from society and this world, there was a big part of me that just didn't want to be here. And I think for me that each time that I've, shifted the emotions and the feelings and then a remedy comes to me it's sort of a for me i see it as an earthing grounding yes. nurturing feeding my body something so it's more of a in um embodying something yeah and um because i really there was a really big part of me and I, I did a lot of work on actually embodying myself in this physical world it was very very difficult for me to actually be here yeah fully yeah. um as a mother, I was fine. I, funny enough, like I, it was so easy for me being a mother. I had beautiful yeah. home births and, and I just loved being a mother, but I just, it was just so difficult. Every other aspect of living in this physical world in this body um, yeah. was very, very difficult for me. And so I think um, for me, the, the healing of my physical body was shifting the emotional tones and frequencies and, and those traumas transforming them and then yeah embodying with a, a remedy or a treatment or a food a tip a particular you know food or something to really yeah. ground in my body yeah. yeah it's been it's been a very interesting die to find that when we work with the base chakra of you know a lot of people um because you know just like in the organs there's even a masculine and feminine of the of the uh, chakra 
most people don't know that. And um, it's incredible. You know, quite often, the female will say, "You know, I don't want to be here." And I and I ask, "Well, are you aware that there's a masculine part of it?" Oh no, um, I don't feel supported whatsoever. That's why I don't want to be here. <laughs> you know? Yes, by that other side of the yeah. self. Yeah, that's right. Because they have no. There's no balance there. So it's like, well, I've, I've got to do this all on my own. There's no support. Yes. So, you know, she, she doesn't want to be here and have to carry the burden of this whole experience in the physical. I mean, yes. the base chakra is what grounds you into the physical, into this yeah. earth. Yeah. So if she... and, sorry, yeah. And, and when I brought my tonsils back. Yeah, that's right. That was I. I um I did a process where I I brought my tonsils back, and I mean they just oh I think the feminine was okay with being here and the masculine was just like I don't want to be there and I ain't coming back. I think we need to explain because you did have your tonsils out, right? You you got them, you know. When I was young, yes. Okay, so what we do is we 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 connect with removed organs. And we give them a voice and um, we need to clear the trauma of those removed organs. And then we, we give them a whole new energetic blueprint and then we place them back energetically where, where they're meant to go. That's a part of our consciousness. Yeah. And I yeah. tell you what, the rest of the body, like I ask, are the other organs happy to have you back? And they say, yeah, they're celebrating. This is like the, the long lost, um, you know, prodigal prodigal son you know it's, it's been away for a long time and they're very happy because yeah. that's to make up for the imbalance yeah and there's something a part of the family's missing yeah yeah and so i know it's confusing when you think oh bringing the tonsils back but that's that's actually it's the consciousness of that part of you well it's yeah it's a whole new blueprint it's a whole new holographic new set of tonsils that yes, holds yeah. the consciousness of perfection and harmony Mm, wow um and i really remember tuning in it, it wasn't at the courses i remember at home tuning in i thought because I, I remember in the courses you did did that with people anyone who'd had their gallbladder taken out or any missing or missing organs and i was thinking well i'm not really missing anything and i remember months and months and months or a year or two down the track thinking hang on a minute i haven't got my tonsils i better bring them back that's right <laughs> and um, so well we've I, especially with women who've had their, um, you know, feminine organs taken out, the, the uterus and, and all of that. It's such a relief when they heal that because not only is the, because the energetic uterus is still there out in the ethers, you could say, but it's the part of that person's consciousness is traumatized. Mm. So we, we need to heal that. And then when we bring that, energy or the new uterus uh, blueprint back the tears you know women just cry because it's like they have it's like they get a feeling that they have their femininity back you know? wow. they feel whole they feel complete whereas mm. before they felt like there was a massive vacuum yeah on, a, on an emotional and energetic level you know and they also don't feel womanly enough and all of that sort of stuff it's the same with the breasts Yes, yeah. yeah. And I have to say something that there was, I was actually thinking about it a little while ago, a few weeks ago, the circumcision. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. When, when you think around. about it, when you think about it, we've had generations of men who, if we look at, mainstream way of thinking it's like oh whatever it doesn't matter what's the big deal but if you were to tune in to becoming that little baby we cannot deny the pain we cannot deny the effect on the nervous system yeah and the trauma and we, that gets locked in yes little baby's consciousness it actually crossed my mind a few weeks ago. It, it, this might be far-fetched. I'm not sure. It was just a thought that I had. I was thinking 
how can this whole, what's going on in the world now, how can that possibly have an energetic connection to everybody? And I suddenly, I, I, it just crossed my mind about this, this one trauma, a physical, I mean, that, there's no doubt it have a massive effect on the nervous system, the, every system of, of a man's body to have that circumcision process done. And it just, um, I don't know if there's a connection or not, but it, it, I mean, there's probably a whole lot of things. It's a huge, big picture, but it, it just, it was just interesting that um, all of so many generations of men have had that same trauma to their, to their masculinity, to their, yes. yeah, to their body. Mm. That's right. And they pass on their pain to the feminine on a subconscious level. Yeah. They connect. Yeah. That way. yeah. And that, that closing off of that, that pain having to, um, you know, if I'm, I no doubt, you know, people listening to this, they might, the majority of men would probably think, oh, that doesn't mean anything doesn't affect me. And yet there is that part of them there that it, it will have affected them. Absolutely. And the thing is that people don't realise, people don't have any idea. They think that, well, okay. Well, firstly, children are even more sensitive than, than adults. Just a newborn, the pain that that affects, you know, it wasn't until we actually allowed the foreskin to have a voice. And doesn't that, that sound funny, I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's right. We had to listen to the, we had to listen to the actual foreskin, and 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 I know you I know you've worked with men doing that process. Yeah, and the yeah. For, the foreskin actually said, "I've been brutalized before I even got a chance at life." Wow! And it was crying. It was it was really really sad. We quickly cleared the trauma. The good yeah. thing is, you know, we we know we we wouldn't be able to bring these very deep things up unless we could clear the trauma like that yes yeah and so and so maybe you could do you were going to do a trauma clearing process earlier maybe this is a perfect time now to if you could speak us through that process well, mainly oh, the one uh, process i was going to show was the stepping out of uh, foreign events yes because that's that's really powerful because we're always drawn in we're always drawn into um, other people's dramas. That's yeah. one. Uh, just the trauma one might be a little bit more uh, too, too complicated. I mean, it's not. Yeah, that yeah. Actually, I yeah, yeah, definitely. So if we yeah, so there is the process of trauma release, which is very very profound and only takes a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, yes. Yeah, sorry, I was getting them mixed up. But this one is. Um, it, it takes probably the same amount of time and it can have a similar effect but in a different way. In a different way and it can yeah. have effect. Uh, this one is not specifically for a particular situation. Oh, well, okay, I'll have to explain it. Let's say there's a, there's a, a drama that's going on within your family. I mean, most families have some sort of dramas going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's say there's, the, there's something happening that just you're being drawn into it, you're being dragged into it, and it's really not your stuff, but it's, it's like this whole um, chaotic thing that's happening. It could be a workplace drama. It could even be a political thing where you get drawn into all of this, you know, conflict and everything. So it's just a very, very simple process uh, to do. What you do is you imagine... Um, you imagine um, a river and you let's just say this is this is in regards to your family right whatever's going on in your family and you see uh, you and the family and you're going down the river really fast it's like going down the gurgler together you know but what you need to do when you you, you see it first but then you must say to yourself you must say um, for the good of all beings, I step up onto the river bank. I go my path of the creator and everyone else goes their path of the creator. Our traumatic paths do not cross. 
and so it is. Simple as that. So you're basically stepping up out of the drama onto the riverbank, and I'll say it one more time, okay? So for the good of all beings, so you're doing this for everybody, for yourself and for family and for everybody else that could be affected. I step, it's like I step out of this drama, yeah? I'm not gonna be a co-creator in this anymore because this is a co-creation with a whole lot of other people, right? Mm -hmm. So you're making the intent that I, for the good of all beings, I step up onto the riverbank. I go my path of the creator. That means I go the easy path, yeah? The smooth path. Everyone else also goes the smooth, easy path of the creator. Our traumatic paths do not cross. It is done. And so it is. As soon as you step up onto that riverbank, you can actually um, view the situation and instantly you'll, you'll feel very different about it. it it's mm. almost like, how would you describe it when you step up? Um, oh, well, well, just then I was visualising, um, I was actually visualising, being here in Melbourne in lockdown, I was actually visualising the whole chaos of, the whole political scene, the medical um, authorities, what, what advice they have or haven't given conflicting with other yeah. practitioners. So I was just visualising stepping away from all that chaos and misinformation and media and just letting everybody... And, and I almost had this vision of everything just clicking into place, everyone going a pathway where they were supported and things were were productive and positive and helpful and everyone was safe yes and it was and then i took a deep breath and it was like oh thank goodness <laughs> that's right it's like you don't once you've done that and it's so simple but once you've yeah. done it it's like you're no longer being dragged into that negative emotional spiral so what that means is that you're no longer part of the problem you've become part of the solution Otherwise, yeah. we're just co-creating the problem with everybody else. When and I must, sorry, and I must say that um, I've had this thing with society for a long time where I just, um, you know, I didn't feel like I quite fit in and, and all the rest. So that was actually probably, I probably needed to do that right then. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's also doesn't mean that you don't care. What it means is that it doesn't mean to say that you're not going to be proactive or anything or, you know, in fact, it puts you in a better position to do the needful because you're not drawn in, you're not dragged into the whole drama. So yes. you've got your energy back. Yes. And, and I must say, I must say, I, I, and this is what I've been battling, battling with um, since March is being drawn into the wrongs that I see happening and I get angry and I want to fight. I, I want to fight. I yeah. want to fight. Yeah. But I don't want to fight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've spent years working all this stuff to have a peaceful existence. Yeah. Yet I've been drawn into the, the wrongs and the, um, the horrible things that I see happening. And I want to fight with these people. I want to go, you're, you're really doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And so I guess for me, it's like, hang on a minute. Don't get drawn into that negative. You need to step away onto the riverbank yeah. and do what's productive. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. recreate what we actually want rather than fighting with what we don't want. That's exactly right. Because the more you fight with it, uh, the more you create it to be that way. Yeah. You're, you're giving energy to the fight. Yes. That means you're yeah. going to be co-creating co that very negative situation that you wanted to, to, to re remedy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think I better go and um, change a few things on my social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, we, 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 I know that you, Di, you, you just want everybody to be healthy and happy like yes, I mean, yeah. most of us do. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. It's, it's and yeah, 
we yeah. want to we want to make a difference and yeah you want to speak up you you know yeah. you do have that sort of that spirit of wanting to make a difference but yeah. but we, we've just got to make sure that it's balanced and you know that we yes. we, we stay out of the dramas and systematically do what we need to do yes yeah and i must say like you um like you put out in your newsletter that it's not about being airy fairy and love and wonderful and it's all going to work out it's actually about um, dealing with what's going on and like you say choosing what what you need to do to be productive and and it is i must say we do need to um you know we do need to look at the truth and well the truth that we're living at the moment and and share some things of reality of what when the reality we're living in at the moment and but then also really focus on the on the solutions as well don't we yeah yeah mm. and and hold the vision of the world that we want to create yeah as much as we possibly can <clears throat> yeah to hold that vision we have to step out of the dramas yes yeah definitely we are all co-creators we are we are part of the creator creator that exists everywhere we are all part of mm -hmm. prime creator you could say so we have uh, we are you could say we're mini creators or co-creators mm -hmm. and and so we are um again it's what we envision and what we are projecting out that we are going to create as a reality mm, when we yeah. did that little exercise um when when we stepped out onto the river bank i I'm, you know i step up onto the river bank here and i go my bright path the path of the creator and everyone else goes their bright path or the easy path the path of, path of ease and flow so we're blessing everyone. Mm. We're not. We're not actually saying, "Oh, well, I've just stepped out of the river, and everyone's just going down <laughs> the gurgler." You know, I don't care. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're seeing everyone else um, also flourishing and also out of the drama. Yeah, and absolutely. That's the important part. Yeah, and that really does create. Um, that does create the most um, productive outcome in the end, really, doesn't it? Because, because then you're not going to have people who are really scared of... I mean, yeah, it's, uh, there, are, there are a few people that probably need to be knocked down a few pegs at the moment, but in general, um, yeah, most people need to be able to feel safe and need, have their needs met, then they won't be putting a lot of negativity onto others as well. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, and they will—they will feel when you change your consciousness towards someone. You would—you would be surprised. I mean, we've done quite often when we've done particular exercises, just that very exercise that I've just showed you, like in my courses, that somebody, let's say, they've had an issue with their um their child, their daughter or their mother-in-law or someone, and that very night they will ring. They haven't spoken for six months. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I've experienced, experienced that. It's incredible. In the dynamics. Yeah. That happens all the time. Mm. It's like one of, one of you has stepped right out and it's, it's almost like subconsciously they get it. We're not playing this game anymore and you've blessed yourself to get out of it and you've blessed them. And, and then the frequency on the, the frequency way. changes, and then somehow in the ether, that person wherever they were, that that frequency's changed, and then they make the effort to call. Or that, that's exactly right. I had one lady who was in tears after we did a similar thing, and her father told her that he loved her for the first time ever that night. Oh wow! I mean, there was a massive shift. Mm. Um, amazing just in a simple exercise like that mm. yeah that's wonderful oh well thank you so much for joining me carol oh look it's been my pleasure die always as always yes yeah i can't wait to be able to come up and visit you hopefully in the near future <laughs> yeah that'd be great and the yeah. weather up here at the moment 
Well, we've got typical Melbourne weather at the moment. It's very um, cloudy and rainy one minute and sunny the next. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but that's okay. Good for the garden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Carol, and um, we'll have to maybe try and touch base a little bit more often. And Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Carol Roberts from Bye. Genome Healing. Thank you. Bye. See you, Di. Bye. Thanks for joining me for Quantum Health, reaching optimum health and happiness with Diane Ellis. I know I am.